All right, folks, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, this week we are broadcasting live from our Palo Alto office in 360. Mm -hmm. First time we've ever done a 360 stream. Uh, it's been pretty seamless so far. Uh, I wouldn't use that word, <laughs> but... Uh... No, seamless is how you say when something is not working and it's full of challenges. Is right. that what seamless means? No? I don't. I thought it okay. was the other. No, that's actually I don't know. the exact opposite. Who knows? But, um, <laughs> but we are experimenting with the Insta360 Pro 2. Mm -hmm. Now, we did receive a demo model, so my suspicion is that some of the issues that we've been having with the back to Insta between these visits, mm -hmm. so it's possible that something's happened with it, but we can kind of get into that a little bit later if we have time. We'll see. Yeah. We're kind of on a, a ticking time bone here. Right. But um, <laughs> it's actually really cool. If you're watching us live with us, then it means that the camera's reset in a funny position. Mm -hmm. I couldn't actually get any like consistency with where the first angle was. Yeah. Like I thought it would be directly in front of the camera. Everybody in the chat. So uh, Linda, thank you very much for tuning in. Good to see you made it back into the uh, into civilization from the wilderness. Just curious, you want to let us know where you were if you're at your parents' uh, last couple of weeks. Uh, Manoj, thanks for tuning in. Kim, Tim Trot, hello. Good hey Tim. Danny Grizzle. Oh yeah, so Danny, you are looking at some of our. Um, what do you call those again? I keep forgetting what the word is. That, oh, the, the truss. Yeah, yeah, the truss. Sizes. I can't remember exactly where we got them from. Might have been um, B&H or Amazon or something. Okay, but, uh, cool. cool. Yeah. And this is actually for a project that we we're doing. We can kind of get into a little bit more of mm -hmm. that, but it was an initial project where we tried doing some remote video production. Right. And so these trusses, uh, we purchased those for that remote video production and used those in that setup. And now we're repurposing them here in the Palo Alto studio. Yeah, we actually went live from that um, conference that we went to. If some of you might remember, it was called SVOD. Um, and yeah, that was the SVOD conference. Right, yeah. right, 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 yeah. We learned a lot, to say the least. <laughs> now, um, I do apologize if you are seeing some buffering. We are kind of at the limits of what we can do for bandwidth. So that was one of the things that we learned uh, just with setting up the live stream, doing some testing yesterday mm -hmm. and this morning is that it does require a lot of bandwidth. So we are sending a 4K signal up. Yeah. And um, just because I think of the kind of the Comcast connection down here isn't as strong, it is actually a pretty good connection, but it is still a little bit limited. And I think we're sharing that connection with some of the other people on the switch that right. are just in this office building. But yeah, I do apologize. If you are in experiencing some real buffering, maybe try knocking down the resolution a little bit. Obviously the quality will suffer, but mm -hmm. hopefully that'll help. We were playing with that a little bit. But uh, before the connection goes out or before the camera dies, why don't we talk about our setup here a little bit? Yeah, sure, definitely. So here in the Palo Alto studio, we've got a really cool setup actually. And what we've done is we've incorporated some rails in the studio here. Mm -hmm. So it'll make it a lot easier for us to move the lighting around in the studio and kind of see me moving around here. We do have a green screen. So we're gonna be getting a larger green screen uh, cloth but we have been experimenting with that and it's been really efficient actually using it with these two kind of pseudo scoops that we've set up, mm -hmm. which has been cool. Now, what, uh, where's the Corgi? Do you have your Corgi with you? Marta's asking, Victor. No. Yeah, no Victor Corgi. No. Uh, but yeah, again, sorry PI engineering, we're seeing some serious buffing, buffering. Uh, Linda, am I missing something? Actually, yeah, that was a, that's a good point. Linda, are you watching on a television? Because that's something that we didn't test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be cool. Danny's saying, so we need an overhead grid. So we kind of have that. And I think as we maybe set this up and do some more fleshing out in this space, that would actually be something pretty cool to, uh, to consider. Yeah. And yeah, Faithful Mess is telling Linda that she has to scroll around. So if you're watching on a TV, I'm not actually sure how you're going to accomplish that. But uh, before it cuts out, why don't we take a quick look around? So. I'm going to show you guys if you want to follow, follow me Cameron this way. behind the camera if you can scroll around. So this is the studio camera that we're going to be using within the Palo Alto studio. It says Zcam E. This is a different kind of lens, but I think they're kind of going after that red kind of market space or the black magic, black magic market where they're using a smaller sensor, but it's a very cool image quality. And Directly to a switch and we control it over the internet. Um, so we can actually start Recording, um, we can't, we haven't figured out how to change focus yet. That's one thing that. And there's also a live preview mode, and it's all uh, just over Ethernet. And of course, you can also connect to this via Wi Fi, which is very cool. So, in a studio setting like this, it makes it very flexible. Uh, one of the goals for this Palo Alto studio is we're actually going to be making this available for booking. Yes. So, if you are in the Palo Alto area, 
we are going to be making this space complete in post, and we're just opening it up to see what kind of what kind of productions we can do in this space. Yeah. But we are looking to do talking heads. We're going to do interviews here. Product demos. Yeah, product demos. Too. We're going to do some town halls as well. So mm -hmm. uh, if you follow us, you've probably seen some of the activities we've had, these tools that we have. So not only just shooting on the Z cam, but we have multi-cam set up with the PTZ Optics cameras as well. Yeah. So these PTZ cameras that we're using, they're actually from PTZ Optics, as Cameron mentioned. Uh, they are NDI cameras, but we're not using that functionality. We're just connecting them over SDI or uh, from anywhere. All right, so uh, Danny was saying that he's not seeing as much buffering, and then he said spoke too soon. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, sorry, Danny. It's what we've been experiencing with this, uh, this camera. So oh, the, actually, okay, that's a good um, This camera, this Insta360 Pro 2, is actually powered by uh, Ubuntu mm -hmm. computer. Yes. So we, we discovered that by just getting into using it and connecting the HDMI out. So when you're using this 3D or 360 camera, you actually see the mouse on the display. And it hasn't mm. dropped off yet, so it's no. kind of an odd, an odd glitch or on that keyboard. We might actually be able to launch something up, maybe not live on the show. I don't want to try yeah. anything now. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just, working. We're just happy. Make, just make sure the mouse isn't directly on oh, here one I, of yeah. our faces. You probably turned it off. Yeah, I turned it off here. Let me just move it out of the way. Okay, so yeah, since you do get to see everybody, and this is a perspective you don't always get to see, mm -hmm. Victor, so, uh, he's responsible for this office, and he's also going to be responsible for the videogenic. Um, uh, services and offerings as mm -hmm. well. And today he's responsible for monitoring audio. So right now, nine minutes, 50 seconds, going strong. I think the, the longest we managed to get it to um, work for was 12 minutes, right? Yeah, 12 yeah. minutes. So I think we've only got a few. Curious. So since we have a few guys on the chat now, or a few folks on the chat, are there any other content producers that you watch in, th in 360? And what's your a whole lot of 360 mm -hmm. content? A lot of the 360 content on YouTube is like pre-recorded. It's not live, right? And it's just served up, pre-meditation to it. So, uh, on the YouTube platform, you actually have to select an option to go uh, live in 360, so mm -hmm. that YouTube knows how to pro panel and just go live without scheduling it. You don't have that option to do 360, which is kind of odd. So, it might be worth reaching out to you. So yeah, why don't we talk about the studio a little more? Yeah, let's talk about it a little bit more before the camera goes out. Yeah, so. Um, so I'm just gonna show 50p. on here if you can see it. Uh, what Phil is talking about with it being an RGB is that the color is actually entirely adjustable. Mm -hmm. Take it over quite a bit. Yeah. Okay, you can see the color adjusting, it's already green now. Nice epiphan green. Yeah, nice epiphan green. Now this is actually really cool because there's also some uh, effects, effects that you can run on this. Yeah. It's like uh, strobing you could do. And if you had a you know a situation where you're trying to recreate something like police lights going in the background or a TV flaring on someone's face, you mm -hmm. can actually use these lights for that too, which is very neat. And of course, in the studio, because there's so many different coloring um, needs that you'll have in front of a green screen, you want to have more than just uh, day uh, daylight and tungsten. Definitely, yeah. Able to be controlled over DMX, so you can actually control them remotely as well. Well, that's right. I'm and that sorry, was I our whole that. that was our whole kind of idea behind this studio is everything should be able to be controlled remotely. Absolutely, and that's where we started. That concept was at SVOD. Right. Yeah. So during SVOD, all of the production was done either from this Palo Alto mm -hmm. office, which thousands of miles. Right. Away, yeah. Hundreds of millions. Trillions <laughs> of miles away. So, on so far planet. away. Yeah, just on another planet. And obviously, we encountered some issues, right? Mm -hmm. There's lag, there's delays. You would, yeah. And uh, it's all stuff that we've worked through, and we've kind of uh, used those learnings to develop a stronger product. Yeah. Yeah. So the future is that you'll be able to come right into this space, into the video giant space, and we'll be connecting you with a remote producer and not have mm -hmm. a huge expense. Because obviously, that's a, a big gap is just... You go into a video production space and there's add-ons and extras and everything. So we have yeah. a lot that's included within this space that you wouldn't normally see from a video production yeah. space. That's actually that's actually a really good question for our viewers. Now, you know, the idea behind this space is there wouldn't actually be a person physically here other than the talent presenting whatever they're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of assuming everything is working. And that was kind of our idea. We we want people to assume that everything is always working and yeah. ready to go. Um, now, what do you think? Do you think that that's actually a good thing, or would you rather have someone tell you action? You know. Yeah. Well, we kind of—I uh, can't remember when we talked about this, but we were equating it to the um, 
to that street booth. What was that street booth called? You remember what it was, like MTV or Much Music. They had the booth in Toronto, and you just go into the booth and you hit the button. Speaker's corner. Yeah, Speaker's Corner. So okay. it's almost a starter remotely, and you have this video production behind you. But yeah, yeah be curious to see what our, what folks think about that. Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, Kim, it is our first time in 360. And uh, Linda Victor says, or sorry, Victor, Linda says hello. Victor says thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well... Um, this camera's working for too long. I'm getting yeah, suspicious. And this is the longest of the 360 cameras gone so far. Uh, actually, I might just flip over to the other layout. We did yeah, a, let's, let's show them the, the We did have layout. a backup layout prepared. So this one is the Z-Cam, which is a flat image in a 360 environment. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of fun to play around with. I'm going to move this camera just out of the way. Hopefully I won't. Probably. But we've got this 2D, 2D kind of space here, which is mm -hmm. kind of cool. I'm going to take another look at the chat, see if we have any of the questions on here. Quit test during the moments before and then exit the room. Yeah, basically. And actually, yeah. that's kind of how you usually use a, a 360 camera, is that any of the video production work you see, you don't see any of the crew. Mm -hmm. So they'll put it out somewhere and then everyone just kind of runs away. Yeah. And um, this camera, mm -hmm. and you can use the um, antenna on top. And that way you can get like a real remote spot for it. Uh, I've done video, uh, I've done 360 work before and the vendors will actually like they wear like Ghibli suits and they'll I think it is yeah Danny you're right so the limitation is bandwidth mm -hmm. on the 360 on the 360 camera and that's again why we're only uh, streaming to YouTube today keep this show short we have a lot of things to do and you know we still have to complete the studio mm -hmm. So um, thanks for joining us. This was uh, the 127th. It's epifan.com slash Paulo dash alto dash studio? Or uh, just PA dash studio PA and it'll bring you to the, to the right link. And of course, we'll include the link in the description of this mm -hmm. video or it won't be in 360. <laughs> and it won't be from the studio actually. We're gonna go on site oh, to wow. uh, WeVideo's office and uh, I believe we're interviewing their CEO for that. Which yeah, should so, be pretty interesting. And uh, WeVideo is uh, a CDN kind of LMS. It's a very cool platform. Yeah, kind, kind of like uh, video production in the cloud. Almost. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Mm -hmm. So a little bit, a little bit like what we looked at before with Adobe's uh, it was Spark. I can't remember what the name was, mm -hmm. but uh, putting video production up in the cloud, which really does open up a lot of options, especially if you're a K twelve. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So if uh, like we did flip over to a mosaic background with our 2D video on this, just to demonstrate how we could do that. Yeah. Because we were anticipating the 360 camera to drop off. But uh, but yeah, thank you very much for tuning in. Make sure to tune in next week and follow us on all the shows, all the socials. And uh, yeah, thanks again. It's good seeing you. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye-bye.